This is my 500 pound Honda VFR 800. And last week it hit 100,000 miles. So I figured a great place to do that would be flat out at Snetterton on one of the track days we run for Bennett's Direct Motorcycle Insurance customers and for Bike Social members. But my flat out is very different to John McGuinness's flat out. Was one owner before us, he'd done all his own servicing, never did the valve clearances until I did them last year, uh, and they were uh, just out of tolerance. It's amazing, it's absolutely yeah. amazing. I mean, that is incredible. I was just watching the clock going around 1986, you know, 1986, 1990. I was like, whoa, I was all excited. <laughs> Where were you when, you, when it went over 100,000? Uh, down the back. Down the, oh, so you had some speed up? Not the fast bit, the, you know, the, the yeah. you know, whatever it's called, not that new field bit, but uh, never missed a beat. It's got a bit wooden for the end of it, it's monkey. It's a little bit hingy in the middle uh, <laughs> with the road tires on. I got a bit giddy at the end there. I had to go. I was catching a group of lads there and I thought, I'm just going to have to stuff one into there around Corum on the last lap. And they come back by me again, so I had to do them again. <laughs> I was like, 
this guy won't go away. But uh, yeah, I, I just. I reckon you get that now and ride to the south of France and not even have a problem. Yeah, it's just, yeah. Every, every gear change, the gearbox is nice, the clutch is nice, you know, up and down the gearbox, and I'm ready to death there, so to be honest, you know, it's probably going to be a bit trash as hard as that in his life, but there you go, it's still all there. I was having a quick look in the mirror to make sure there's no puffs of smoke anyway. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, it looked good going past. It was fine, yeah, absolutely sweet. So I really enjoyed that, it was a good laugh, you know, it's very rare I get to do things like that. Yeah. I was a bit nervous on like road tires, I was like, I was like Miss Daisy for laughing too, because I got some. Uh, <laughs> Oh, no. Now, your Miss Daisy is probably my <laughs> going harder than I'll ever manage. No, that's brilliant. Cheers for that. You've got a shot for a paper on that car. You've yeah, got yeah. Ice cream in the Lake District. You can jump in and ride to the south of France with your wife on the back with a bit of luggage on it. Yeah. What a great machine. Yeah, yeah. No, that's brilliant. Thank you. Cheers. Watching John ride round, I admit I thought that he's not going as hard as I'd hoped. I'd, I'd asked him to properly thrash it. And when he said he'd seen 145 on the clocks, I reckoned I could beat that. I mean, I beat Joey Dunlop at the Isle of Man in 2000, so why not John McGuinness too? I had the uh, Sysap tracker I reviewed on the bike while I was there, and when I got home I realised it showed John's speed, and it showed mine. Now look at the two traces, look at how consistent John is, and look at how much longer I spent at lower speed. Now look at the top speed, so GPS logged the day's maximum at 132 mile an hour, so that kind of goes with what you'd expect of the clock saying 145. And I should say that was John did the 132, not me. And you can see how he was hitting that on most of the laps. Now I got close on my first lap, but then dropped right off. Why? Because I was trying to get it over 145 and suddenly realized the end of the back straight was coming up much quicker than I expected. And I was about to overshoot. That was a proper panicky moment. Proper riders like John make it look easy. I had fun on the VFR, but I'll never, ever get anywhere close to that kind of talent. So John mentioned that the road tyres took some getting used to. These are Dunlop mutants, and they've always been excellent on the road and on track before, but under hard braking here after John had had them, they were getting a bit like woody feeling and do look a bit stepped now. They've got about five and a half thousand miles on them, and they do more, but I reckon that session with McGuinness has brought forward when they need changing a bit. Overall though, they've been great, and as I said, this isn't the first time I've had the Honda on track. Last year I took it to Cadwell and rode with my mate Phil, who's got a VFR as well. So we're at Cadwell Park, I'm here with Phil Kameen, bike social member and VFR owner. This was kind of going to be almost a culmination of having this after all the work I'd done, but it's been eventful. But Phil, we've known each other for years. Yes. We've, um, First thing we had to do, didn't we? We both we, we like to do track days together anyway, don't we? And try yeah. and try and get out. So how are we going to get to meet up again? Um, we had to put the lever guards on, didn't we? Which, yeah. So. Easy on mine. Yours but, was a yeah, slightly harder. So um, I tried to, to do it myself. Yeah. Then I took it to my local bike dealer, and he went, "You're going to need a new handlebar." And I went, "There's only one man for the job." <laughs> so I had got myself over to John, and then we spent two and a half hours swearing and cursing yeah. and using blow torches. Yeah, it was a blow torch that did it in, in, the, end, in, in the end yeah. to remove uh, the handlebar and get the bar, the, uh, the brake lever guard on. Um, but it's on now, so it's all good. So uh, Yeah, and they weren't actually, they're Oxford ones, so really good prices actually. And they're, they're, you do have to have these on a track day now, but actually, assuming you can get the old bar going out, and we realised somebody glued yours in, and that yes. was the problem. So it's pretty unlikely that anybody else will have that trouble. I yes, think, but, hopefully, uh, yeah. That's the joy of owning 20-year-old motorcycles, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Well, that's the point, and that's, this one's now done nearly 97,000 miles. Yours has done how many? 36,000, not many, really. So it's a, yours is a VTEC, uh, full yep. service history, presumably. Pretty much. Mine's one owner, own servicing, didn't do the valve clearances. Before coming here, I'd done the valve clearances. It then started leaking oil out of the water pump, fixed that. Then it started leaking coolant out of the water pump, or out of the coolant pump. Uh, so it's been, then yeah. on the way up here, it was idling at three and a half thousand revs, weren't it? Leaving at six in the morning, pushed it yeah, away from it the house. It, it makes a good sound though, so it's all right. Yeah, but um, what really matters, I guess, is what's the how difference? they compare. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I was lucky in that um, when I bought this, it had good history and then the only thing I needed to do was uh, replace the rear shock and yeah. I had the suspension at the front. And you got a YSS shock on this? I got a YSS yeah. shock because it's much, much cheaper. Yeah. So I used to have the preload, I, uh, the remote adjuster, it doesn't have right. that any longer. Yeah. But it's, you know, it's not too bad, I was managed to adjust it. And how's it, it handled? How have you got on with the bike at Ramp Yeah, well? Yeah, good. It's a little bit heavy. Um, yeah. Sometimes you feel maybe a little bit pogoey. You've got no sort of, you know, I haven't got much adjustment at the front of the bike. Yeah. But um, yeah, I think one of the big things I notice is out, drive out of corners. If I drop into the out of the VTEC zone, 
then uh, suddenly I've got no power at all. Almost, really? And then I hit 7,000. So basically I'm learning to as I go around the track to make sure that I'm in that 7,000 to yeah. 12,000 RPM. Do you so notice it with this? Because you'd expect that introducing the VTEC technology would have created like uh, the best of both worlds. Surely the idea is you get great talking yeah. and great talking, but it feels like this seems to pull better than that. Yeah, it, it, it does a lot of the time. I think it's only in that, what you know, I have to be on the boil. Right. So, you know, sort of, which it's is fine on the track, but yeah. But if you're being lazy on the road and, you know, sort of at speed, when you're yeah. in top gear, you're not in the VTEC. So yeah. suddenly if you want to do something at that point, yeah. you can pull away, whereas I have to dive through the gears. And yeah. But um, I, I, um, I test rode one of those 20 years ago or something, yeah. and I always thought it was a little bit characterless because it had such really? a smooth yeah. turbine-like behavior. Yeah. Whereas I, I then test rode one of these not long afterwards when they came out. And I love the fact that it had a little bit of Jackal and Hyde. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, because I think that's what makes bikes like GSX-Rs and, and other things exciting is. Uh, I think that, you know, when this thing's working well, it sounds fantastic. I love the feel of the engine, the sound of the engine, the way it pulls around here is great, but it's been an utter nightmare to work on. I've really not enjoyed working on it, but it's actually handled really well. So the, I've got a Hagon shock on it, uh, and I've got the remote preload adjuster on it. Uh, and it's really good, because yeah. the, the old shock was knackered. And I think that's the problem with, what I'm learning about old, worn out bikes is, they're great until you start but, touching them, yeah. and start having to interfere with stuff. But yeah, so the handling around here, it's actually handled really well. Um, I'm in the novice group, I'm, I could, I'd probably be in the intermediate group, but I'm not super fast, but it's, these Dunlop Mutants have been really good. I've left them at normal tyre pressure. They're snotting up, so they look cool. I like that. Uh, and it's, Excellent. It, it was touching the pegs down uh, until I realised that I'd left the preload fully unwound after I'd um, installed the shock. Yeah. Wound that up, and now it's just touching down a couple of times. It's a sport touring bike. It's old. It's but old. it's, you know, 130 down the back straight. It's yeah. going past stuff. It's, yep, it yep. works. Staying ahead so of me a lot of the time. So, yeah, it's, it's working, right? So you can take a 97,000 mile bike on track. You can. Yeah, and you can take a 100,000 mile one on track too. And it'll even cope with one of the uh, world's best racers. I, I do mean John McGuinness, not me. I wonder, though, now, what power this is putting out. If you want to see this on a dyno, let me know in the comments below and I'll do it. Obviously, we shouldn't be surprised that a bike can get to this kind of mileage if it's looked after, but you do need to maintain them. And these videos aren't sponsored by aftermarket parts specialist Wiimoto, but they did supply some of the spares I've used over the past year or so. But honestly, I've used them for years to get bits for my various bikes because the prices are great, delivery is quick, and the customer service is brilliant. The Hagon shock I have in here was an essential as the old one was knackered and couldn't be rebuilt, and the forks were serviced by KTEC, and the price for the servicing was so good. It's not like you're having some kind of, I mean, you are having a specialist race engineer do them, but you're not paying those kind of prices. It was just a good price for service. But other than that, this bike hasn't really needed anything outside of normal wear and tear. I've fitted a new clutch, which you can see up here, but otherwise I'd say the most important thing is to keep on top of oil changes with any bike or car. I've been using rock oil for the engine, brake fluid and the coolant, which I've had to change several times. And next year I'll be visiting rock oil where I'll get to properly geek out and ask loads of questions. So be sure to subscribe if you want to catch that. But I have kind of got ahead of myself here with the videos as I've not shown you the work I did on the valve clearances yet, or the overheating problems, or the royal pain in the ass that was replacing the thermostat. But I'll get those out as quick as I can. So do make sure you're subscribed. Oh, and please do hit the like button as it really helps. Hit it twice if you didn't like the video. Before next time though, why don't you come and say hello at the Bennett's Bike Social Facebook group. Michael Mann and Michael Burton, Steve Lamb and Steve Rose, Andy Shoebridge and I are all there, as well as thousands of other like-minded riders. It's a friendly place to be and we've got loads of industry experts on there too. So if you've got any questions about biking or just want to know some great places to go, get yourself over there.
Fuck off. <laughs>